subscribers to New Orleans Tough Football get all, all of our news, notes, analysis, the practice breakdowns, all the stories, all the insight, early access to podcasts, podcasts that don't go out to the public. You get full videos of the one-on-ones, the seven-on-sevens, all the stuff they're doing at practice that you can't see. We bring to you on our website. Make sure you sign up today. Use the code CAMP24 to save 20% on your first payment. Get all the access, get all the video, get all the information. Be more informed than everybody else for the low price of $9 a month at full price. That's $720 with the the 20% off on your first payment. Get locked in today for the whole entire season. You will not regret it. Use the code CAMP24. All right, welcome back to another episode of New Orleans.Football presented by PJ's Coffee. We are coming to you from the Oshner Health Podcast Studio located here in Irvine, California, where we're out here for Saints training camp. And if you need a new car, make sure you check out my guy, Matt Bowers. Dealerships all over the Gulf Coast region, great prices, great customer care, great car buying experience. He'll get you the car of your dreams at dream prices. So make sure you go check him out at one of his many locations today. All right, on this show, we're going to talk about the offensive line, where it stands, what we're seeing in camp, who's standing out, who isn't, who needs to step it up, and who needs to step out, all that and so much more after this quick word from our great sponsors. Oshner Health inspires healthier lives and stronger communities through a combination of standard-setting expertise, quality, and connection not found anywhere else in the region. To learn more about how Oshner empowers people to get well and stay well, visit oshner.org. Long live you. The New Orleans Dot Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. Time for a new watch? Go check out Friend and Company Fine Jewelers' wide array of Breitling watches at their showroom on Maple Street. They have every type of watch that you want, and they can get you right for any type of occasion. And while you're there, check out their engagement salon. They'll make sure you find the perfect ring for that special someone. Their experienced staff offer five-star customer care to help you find the perfect watch, ring, or whatever else you're looking to buy. Visit them today. Friend and Company Fine Jewelers, 7713 Maple Street between Adams and Burdett. 504-866-5433, or visit them at friendandcompany.com. Looking for the best insurance coverage at the lowest price? Look no further than Air Insurance, the Earhart Agency. They are a local independent insurance agency right here in New Orleans, specializing in home, flood, and auto insurance. Their agents are born and raised in the area and understand our community's unique needs and the homeowner's insurance crisis our residents are currently in. At Air Insurance, the Earhart Agency, Their dedicated team will shop every available carrier in the market, ensuring you get the most comprehensive coverage at the lowest possible price. They know your time is valuable, which is why they work diligently to provide you with the quotes as soon as possible. Why settle for less when you can have the best? Trust Shawbear Insurance, the Earhart agency, to protect what matters most to you. I do. I've been a client of theirs since 2021. When we couldn't find someone to insure our house because of the big oak tree growing over top, Shawbear worked until they found someone that would work with us and give us the protection that we need to feel safe in our new home. Call them today at 504-326-6526 or visit them online at Protected by Shawbear. That's 504-326-6526. Shawbear Insurance, the Earhart Agency, your local insurance experts. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh Punch Tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin-skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome back to the Austrian Health Podcast Studio. It's now time for... The lead presented by Friend & Company Fine Jewelers. Friend & Company Fine Jewelers are the official jewelers of the New Orleans Saints, and they should be the official home for your next Breitling watch. So if you're in the market for one of those, check them out down on Maple Street. They'll get you a beautiful watch. And while you're there, check out their engagement salon. They have a wide selection of rings, and they will make sure you get the right one for that special summer. Let's hit the lead topic, guys. How worried should should we be about the Saints' O-line struggles? Today, it was tough for the O-line. You can't put it any other way. And especially for Tali Fawaga, the first round pick, he he seemed to struggle at certain points during today's practice, a little bit yesterday, but more so today. And then as a whole, with the rotation that they had, they can never get something right. So are they further behind than we expected, or are they just bad? 
I mean, I try not to overreact to certain sample sizes, and and this was the worst. This was the most lopsided it's been. This is, you know, Nick, you charted it. I'll let you read off the numbers, but it was all third down work for the most part, and what, Carr got pressured on six of 14 dropbacks? Is that what it was? Or yep. sacked, even, uh, it's possibly? Hard, it's, it's hard to know what a sack, yeah. actually. It's like Potential if, so, if someone's in the radius, we kind of call it a sack, and it's hard to know if it would actually end in a sack, but like... Sack basically in training camp is anything that's affecting of the quarterback, but like they can't actually hit him. They're giving up, like, you know, they don't touch him even. So yeah. it's hard to actually yeah. know. Like, and then sometimes like a quarterback might stand in there and say, All right, this guy screwed up, but I'm gonna stand in here and get my I'm throw not gonna off. get hit. It, I and work, work and, on and the still play. execute the play. It, whereas like in a real situation, if they're coming, they might roll out and like try to hit yeah. something. So it, it it's not a real situation. Um yeah, I mean, look, there was a lot of there was a lot of pressure in this practice. Um, you know, I think it's it, it raises some some level of sure. concern because it's two days in a row where it feels like it, it's hard to get working because there's so much pressure. I think the amount of pressure on line two and line three is even more significant than it is on on mm-hmm. line one, and I think the culmination of everything makes it stand out. I would say like one thing, just in that, you know, just just playing devil's advocate on both sides of this, like. I think one thing that, that, that I will point out about that is that I think the depth of the defensive line is substantially better than the depth of the offensive line. And as you go down, like it's wearing out. Whereas you got guys on the second unit rushing off the edge that are going to rotate in with the first. Like I doubt Cam Jordan's going to be. Chase Young has been playing with the second yeah. team in recent days. Yeah, yeah. So like I doubt, I doubt Cam Jordan's probably a first teamer when, when all said and done. Like, so there's going to be somebody else up there. Like you said, Chase Young. I think that kind of wears it out a, a little bit. Um, you know, Chase at a certain point was with the first team uh, today. He was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing they're working third down for the first time in a new offense in a new system. Like, there's going to be hiccups. Trevor Penning needs time. Tali Fuaga needs time. Like, I think all those things. You know, I I don't think you're drawing conclusions today. Um, you know, I, th- I thought. The second and third team quarterbacks were kind of giving up a little bit too quick on plays, running too quick. You know, that's another thing. But I mean, overall, it's too much pressure. It's yeah. too much pressure. Um, I think it needs to be a little bit better. I, I think the running backs did a poor job in blitz pickup today, too. Like, there's a lot of stuff coming off that edge that's just like going straight to it. And yeah. those are things that I think got to get picked up with the scheme. So there's a lot of pieces that kind of go, go into some of these things. But overall, way too much pressure. Is it concerning? Yeah, it's concerning because... It's a concern coming into the season, and it's not alleviated really at all to, to this level. That's the right yeah. phrasing is there. They haven't alleviated anything. So I, first of all, ironically enough, I, I watched Penning and Fog of the whole practice today. I think this was Penning's be- one of Penning's best practices yeah. mm-hmm. on a day that was the worst practice for the offensive line, and he was our biggest worry spot. Some people have been raving about Fuaga. Like Eric McCoy was like basically calling him a phenom, and he said he's never seen a guy like him. Um, so I think overall, not trying to overreact to any small sample sizes, I'm where I was in March and yeah, June same. and July, mm-hmm. which is it's the biggest weakness on the team. It's the biggest concern on the team. They're going to have to scheme their way out of it because they're not going to talent their way out of it. But I also still, one of the things I like best about this team mm-hmm. is I believe in what Clint Kubiak and Rick Dennison and John Benton are teaching. I believe in the quick passing game. I believe in the play action. They, they know they've got a problem, and, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully – they can mask it as much as possible. I mean, we were doing stories about how, like, the 49ers offensive line coach said, you don't need great. But it's a deficiency. It's the biggest deficiency on we're, the team, and that's what we've seen. We're too deep into this conversation with missing the main point, too. Eric McCoy wasn't playing today. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's a massive... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's a massive, massive issue, too. Yeah. So you take him he out... He was getting you a veteran rest You day. take another guy out, a, a, a guard. Like, mm-hmm. it's... Yeah. it's uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a recipe to be a mess. Um, but I do think that it needs... to take time like the thing is with this is like i I don't think you should draw a conclusion today because it was bad on july 31st it was always going to be bad on july 31st yeah the first day of pads was always be like shocking the second day of turn of events if we thought the offensive line looks great like breaking news yeah yeah it was always going to look bad i think you just have to let the process play out like penning is playing on a new side huaga is playing on a new side Mm -hmm. he's a rookie this guy's penning's basically you know in the same basket like you got to just let it see where it goes. I, I think the thing that worries me a little bit more is like some of these backstops that we were looking at it. Like, yeah. I don't know that we've seen the signs from maybe the the backstops where it's like, okay, yeah. well, if Penning if turns into a fail point, like, okay, this guy's coming up. 
I don't know that I feel good about those options. So I kind of like Lucas kind of Patrick at left guard, who I think is going to win the starting left guard job. But yeah, the the backstops at right tackle probably Ole Udo and Landon Young have have struggled more than Penning to this point. Struggle <laughs> struggle is a, a very nice word to put from what happened today because, like you pointed out, Eric McCoy wasn't in, so that meant Lucas Patrick had to move over. Nick Saldivari is still hurt. And other people, they got rotation. We had four team pairs today. There were different people getting rotations at guard, and none of them, none of them could stop anything. And then you look at one on ones. I know that's more of like a, but it's your chance to show what you can do against a straight up defender. And even that, they were struggling horribly against some of the top defense alignment that would get rotation. So it's a it's a really it's a really tough look whenever people that possibly might play later in the year or whenever their number is called aren't able to perform here's the other thing too and i i I keep saying this every single time it's like you see where someone's coming from and you see pressure and it's like well that must have been the left tackle and you get that impression but like then if you actually have film on it it's like oh well he had to pick up this guy and that was actually the blitzing and then then the the running back didn't pick him up and it's, it's hard to see all those pieces in a live setting, like ball snapped, and you just kind of see like a flash in the backfield, and there's no way to get another look at it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're right on top of it in the setting. And these are professional athletes who are really, really fast. Like things happen. Right. I tried really, to, really. I tried fast. to be like today. Today I am watching Penning and Fuaga, and even that is impossible. Yeah, they're how many feet away or a left tackle but, or a right tackle? And if the play went left, and I happened to be looking at at Penning, I was like, yeah. I have no, I missed it. I missed it yeah. because I was looking at Penning, I couldn't see Fuaga. Like it is really hard unless you, we can't review the tape. My, my like my reason for saying that is that I felt like part of my impression was that there was some issues with blitz pickup in the backfield, and yeah. you have new guys in there, and mm-hmm. that wasn't a strong suit of, of Alvin Kamara last season. I mean, part of my like I, I kind of felt like some of the pressure was was a result of that, and like you you got Willie Gay getting sacks, so like. That's clearly a blitz. I mean, so some of that stuff, I, I think, is part of it, too. It isn't all just straight up, like, these offensive of linemen can't block. Well, it wasn't good enough. I think it was just kind of a collective issue that isn't just isolated to one spot. And I do think some of the other little things can get cleaned up, and that yeah. kind of helps a little bit there. It's still way too much. It's still an alarming issue. It's still something yeah. they have to get fixed. I just want to see the process. Um, you know, it's not... Making excuses, I, I just no, you got to see I, I would the just say it, it, you said but it's it right. very possible that like they didn't do enough, and maybe that's the end conclusion here. But right now, you just can't you can't get there yet. It's been what we thought it would be. Like yeah. we wish we could come here and say they've really come along. They they haven't, but that doesn't mean it's it's worse than we thought it would be. Yeah. It's it's kind of what we it's, expected, it's, and yeah. we're seeing it play out. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's something to worry about. Though. Yeah, it's definitely it, it always to worry was. About. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it still is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You talk about the speed. That's a great way of summarizing it. And the main person, a lot of the defensive linemen and the defensive ends were getting great just pass rush as a whole. But speed is a thing that Chase Young has elevated on the defensive line. Whenever he snaps off the ball, he's not only putting hands on somebody, but he's looking around to see where the ball is. And that's just something that, to this point, they haven't been able to stop. So that'll take us to our next segment. Presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. My guy just rode that segue better than Paul Blart. Like that was beautiful, man. <laughs> Thanks, he just man. rode that. Did you did you catch that? He that didn't ride it. He he freestyled. That was a seamless. That was a seamless. I mean, you, you hit that beat and just that was natural. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, but that'll take us into this next segment. Chase Young has been eating. He talked today at the podium. He gave praises to Fawaga about his play. But what have we seen from him, and how is he going to continue to elevate? I mean, he's looked incredible. Um, yeah. It's the chicken or the egg thing, though, a little bit. Like, is the offensive line the reason? Is the defensive line the reason? Is it a little bit of both? Um, you know, but I, I will argue, like, the one thing is, is if you want to give all the credit to the – or all the blame to the offensive line for the defensive line's success, then what degree are you giving the Saints' offensive line the credit for the run game looking really good – in what degree of blame are you giving the defensive line for not being able to stop the run? Yeah. It's a little bit of it's a little bit of both on both sides. Like it's it's always going to be somewhere a little bit of both. Um, you know, I do think Chase Young does take advantage of inefficiencies in this offensive line, but I also think he looks great. Like yeah. I think he's doing a great job rushing the passer. Um, you know, not everybody is dominating at the level at which he's dominating. When he goes over there, he dominates more than than everybody else. And he's had two days in a row now where 
there's been a sequence of two plays where he just completely blew up two plays back to back. It was kind of awesome today. Like he's just killing everyone. And he says, Hey, you better get someone over here to chip. Like that's, that's, I mean, that's where he's at. I love that. He's that he's talking because it means he feels good. Like you want this guy to feel good. He feels great about what he's doing right now, man. He's, I mean, I don't know how you want to rank them. I mean, let's take production aside, just pure talent. Like you're going out there and you're watching these guys and you're saying, who are the most talented players on this team? Yeah. Like on the defensive side of the ball, he's top two, like just talent. Is he going to make the talent consistent? Is he going to make it? But you see exactly why number two pick in the draft. Like if you're drafting traits right now, like this dude is, is more than I realized more than I realized from watching him play and studying him. and And you're saying chicken versus the egg, him, or defensive line versus the offensive line. It's kind of chicken versus the egg, the rest of the defensive line. I'm like, oh, were these whole B-teamers before, and this is what an A-teamer looks like? Because, <laughs> yes. uh, look, and John Benton said it too. I was talking to the offensive line coach, and he couldn't help but like let out a laugh. And he goes, I think you can argue when Chase came out to practice, it changed the dynamic. Oh, it yeah, for sure. Absolutely has. He's a wrecking ball. For He's, sure. um, Yeah, I mean, obviously it has not consistently translated throughout his career so we cannot pass judgment on it but no it is not just a oh he's succeeding because the offensive line is he if an offensive lineman survives against him it looks like a great play by the offensive line he is a clear he's making a clear impact um so i'm curious to see what it is that holds him back or has held him back i mean look we know what carl granderson is he's a guy that 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 has the ability to get eight sacks every single season and he's gonna do it and he's out there and he's still getting some sacks in the in these practices but it's not every single snap (laughs) and he's going against the same people so you know there is an elevation from average but i don't i don't know what carl is a good a good serviceable solid pass rusher and chase young is, is performing at a higher level the the issue with him has never been talent though he's always been otherworldly Mm -hmm. um it's just making it happen and the saint i mean look the saints know that they got they had davenport they had you know it's a battle with with marshawn to some level like just being locked in and consistent all the time so there's guys that have that ability um and they're able to kind of do it at different levels but he's somebody that just needs to be consistent it's a huge thing though no question well we did confidence index the other day did did, has it gone out i mean we try not to overreact to yeah. 48 hours of practice, but has it gone up <laughs> in 48 hours of practice? See what he looks like. Like I, I, It has for me, not because I'm more confident that he'll be healthier or more confident that he'll solve whatever problems we had before, but the floor has been raised. I'm like, oh. So like we're talking about a guy who even if he even if he is Marcus Davenport and you can never count on the consistency, mm-hmm. you're still getting a guy that – was once called the best player on the defense. And it's like, yeah, you might not get it every week, but when you're getting it, you're getting something special. Yeah, I saw, I, th- I think I'm holding steady. Like, yeah. I mean, he looks awesome. I mean, that there is the O-line stuff. There's the, you know, is he going to be locked in every single week? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm holding steady at it, but I mean, I've, I've been thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. And I think if you want to talk about like the early impression, the difference between like the O line to him, like his is like a wow, like yeah. wow, th- th- he figured this all out. Like, yeah. I'm interested to see does his game change? Does does he play with more? But like like was there a protection level of his body? Even you know if it was was um, subconsciously, you know, yeah, like right. you not really thinking about it, but like you were doing it. Does he feel more confident in his body now? Is he free? like this? The problem with the with him is that like he doesn't like to say anything. So yeah, you ask these yeah. questions and he won't say it. I mean, the best example of Chase Young is like someone was like, "Hey, like heard Tyron was at your uh, your meeting with the dinner with the Saints." He's like, "No, he wasn't there." Like <laughs> Tyron was like, "Yeah, I was there." <laughs> so I mean, like Chase just isn't gonna tell us anything. Yeah, so yeah. regardless of what's going on, like we we aren't really gonna know. But like I do wonder if there's a level to it, and you know I do wonder if if that 2020 draft was different more access more availability normal like does this get discovered then and is his career different like I, I don't know i don't know i mean it's kind of a, kind of one of those interesting subplots but um yeah i mean i'm, I'm thoroughly impressed yep. though this might be a little cavalier but you know i'm gonna ride with my uh pick the other day i'm pushing all the chips in on the table even though this is in a vacuum i do think that just the level of skill that he's been able to display so far and he's he's taking in between time of periods to learn from Cam Jordan, trying to peel whatever he can from him, learn different stuff from Grandison and what worked in this defense, different things like that. You know, he's still kind of learning the Saints' defensive scheme, but 
I do think you pair that both together, plus the extra motivation of knowing, hey, I need to get paid next year. I think that that's going to propel him to a level where he can be one of the, I don't want to say the best, but he can be one of the best players on this defense. Yeah. And going back to what you said earlier with the segue, I'm going to be honest with you. I completely forgot what Paul Blart was until I thought about it. And I was like, wait, isn't that the guy that played Sean Payton in that movie? And now I'm, I'm on game now. So, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah it was. For sure. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I knew who Paul Blart was, but I still don't get the reference. So. He rides a Segway. Segway. See yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's what I missed. Double entendre. That's hey, what I missed. That guy's pen is too nice. But let's hit the next segment presented by Shotbear Insurance, the Earhart Agency. Look, we've talked about the both of the lines, the offensive line and the defensive line. But with that comes some injuries. There's a couple of linemen, like Nick Saldaveri, that's injured. The defense took a big hit today with Demario Davis. So are we concerned about the injuries that are piling up on this team? I'm not, like, concerned about really any of them individually isolated because, like, we see Marshawn back out there today. We see Kendra out there. Brian Brzee's working out on a side field. Juwan Johnson's on the field running after practice. Chris Olave didn't actually miss any time, yeah. which is nah, really He's back out there running, looks completely Angry. normal. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, the headliners, no major injuries. I mean, some of the, the guys, you know, it seems like there's maybe some more significant injuries a little bit lower down. But, I mean, you know, the, no disrespect to them. Like, those aren't the ones that keep you up at night. I am a little bit worried, though, about the overall volume of, of injuries. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it feels like a, a lot. Like, they're down to... I don't know how many receivers are on the team, but they were down to like six today, seven. Like it, they're, they're three they're, guys out. Yeah. They're getting deep into that. Like it's it's a lot of injuries overall. It feels like two or three guys are going out every single day. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think overall the overall number is 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 bother. I think bothersome is the right word. More so more so than than concerned. Just because, like I said, I feels like those guys are coming back, but it's getting to the point now where like. Man, if they lose like another receiver, uh, it's gonna it could affect practice. Like, you only have three guys over. Like they do the walkthrough and they split it up. You got four over here, three over mm -hmm. here. Like, you're you're a guy away, two guys away from not being able to like do two walkthroughs because you don't got enough receivers. Um, well, we saw on their last off day, and they've got an off day uh, coming up tomorrow. They sign three offensive linemen because they because they lost a few in practice. You need yeah. bodies to get through practice. Um, so I wonder if that happens at receiver, the next casting call comes through here. Um, it's pretty easy for these guys to audition since there's five camps in Southern California right yeah. now. They a lot just, of them probably they live They should here. all stay in a hotel. The circuit, yeah, yeah, they live here anyway. Um, our, our, our friends over there uh, at the training facility uh, that trained, uh, you know, Tom House's training facility are probably keeping busy this year. Um, but... Uh, um, we were talking last night. We were like, is this more injuries than usual in camp? And, and you, you had a gut that it was. I thought maybe it was close. Mm -hmm. And then we come out there, and there's four new ones today. And I'm like, all right, it's officially. Yeah. It's more. Now, I don't draw any conclusions from that. I don't think that means, oh, their training staff needs to be fired, or no. this isn't working, or whatever. They're all different. They all come in different ways. There's a couple soft tissues in there. There's a couple guys who are just frequent injury guys or whatever. But, yeah, today was the day when Cedric Wilson, Bub Means, and Equinemius St. Brown aren't out there at wide receiver, and then by the end of practice, tomorrow Davis is leaving. It's like, all right, now now it feels like this is a trend that needs to stop. But, but a, a cause or a reason for it, I can't say that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, part of it's, you know, Part of it's you know you got some some older guys on the team too like that's gonna happen and then like there like you said there's there's a handful of frequent injury guys um yeah. and some of those have popped up you know guys that are that's young and old I mean Kendra Miller falls into that category yeah. Nick Saldaveri falls into that category and they're young guys it's not yeah. just receiver though the tight end room is just thinned out a little bit too Marshawn's had a lot of injuries yep. yeah. recently um Z just had a couple surgeries like I mean there's just some guys that that have had bad luck with injuries. Uh, so I mean that's just kind of part of the part of the deal, but yeah, I mean I'm not necessarily I I don't know like at first it's like you're, you're thinking is it climate and then we were looking at him last night and it's like well this is this is bone this is elbow this is ankle this is so I I don't know that there's a trend it's just it's just yep. very bad luck right now very yeah. bad luck yeah Demario Demario worries me if it's a hamstring hopefully it's it's minor precautionary it doesn't miss much time but you don't want to see Demario start to fall behind Demario's got that training program though, so <laughs> I don't really worry about him be, too much he's back yeah. already he's yeah, practicing right I'm now I'm gonna say uh, I used to watch it with my grandpa the six million dollar man they up in there getting them right right now I already know they are well that's before my time Brandon 
That was before your time? Yeah, it was before my time. Hey, man, you sit down, you watch old Did stuff. Did you watch Six Million Dollar Man? I've heard of it. Yeah, it was before your time. Yeah, he's the oldest guy on our team. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Hey, man, I just hang around. I, my grandpa's my best friend, man. I just hang around. Hey, around and I, I get to up. see different things. <laughs> but we're going to hit a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue to analyze training camp and then hit the Martin's question of the day. Keep it locked to New Orleans Football. Total Maintenance is one of the largest locally owned home and commercial service providers in South Louisiana. They were founded in 1980 and served the greater New Orleans and Baton Rouge markets. And Total Maintenance wants to show some love to our NOF listeners. They have a membership program that gets you two tune-up visits for AC and heating, as well as club membership discounts of 15% on all repairs, half off of all diagnostic charges, and three-year warranties on most repairs for membership clients. This is usually priced at the low price of $24.95 a month per system, but if you tell Total Maintenance that you found them through NOF, they'll lower the price to $20.95 per month per system for as long as you keep the membership active. It will never increase. Total Maintenance has a tune-up special running this summer for $79, down from the normal price of $179. This is a one-time offer for one system only. They also offer a free diagnostic on second opinions on units deemed to be unrepairable. And they offer free estimates for replacements as well as commercial maintenance programs. Services include AC and heating service and replacement, electrical service, plumbing service, as well as generator service and installation. They are total maintenance. Find them at tm-ac.com or give them a call at 504-841-3300 or if you're in the Baton Rouge area, 225-480-1000. There's nothing quite like the feeling of stepping into your dream home. At Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union, we can help make that dream a reality with a team dedicated to you. When you partner with Jefferson Financial, you do so for the life of the loan. Having a single point of contact when questions arise is invaluable. Our experts are here to guide you every step of the way. There's no better time to invest in your future. Apply online at jeffersonfinancial.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. Rumelog combos are back at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Zesty shrimp rumelog served with fried shrimp, catfish, or soft shell crab starting at $10.99. Or try one of our spring specials, catfish Lafitte, or lemon caper fish with crab meat. Now at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Welcome back to the Oshner Health Podcast Studio in Irvine, California. You know, uh, during the break, we were talking. We were trying to see because the breaks are getting longer because more people are supporting the show. What's, what would be a good break snack? What would be a good snack to hit in between the break? What you going with, Nick? Uh, I mean, I probably, so so we're on a break. I don't want anything like a, that's gonna that's gonna like require like you mean like for cleanup. us or for the for our, for like for cleanup? Our, our like watchers, I don't want cleanup. Our viewers yeah. or for us? For for the viewers. Oh, what should I they mean, hit? it's just the best. The best snack is it's always a sour patch. It's always a sour sure. patch. You really can't go wrong. Uh, you could maybe go with different variations. You can go with the bigs, the normals. You can get the pack of the blues. Come you on. can get the watermelons. But like something with sour patch on it is that that's for the win every right. single time. Now number two, and there's been an exciting development in the in the candy slash licorice space. That's right. Is the stuffed Twizzler. You now the stuffed Twizzler put me on game. The stuffed Twizzler is is I, it feels like one of the biggest breakthroughs yeah. in the candy space, maybe in the last decade. Revolutionary, Re- well, yeah, I wouldn't say revolutionary, but it feels like the natural extension to uh, uh, the 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 goatsy cowtail. Like it's it's a it's the next step. <laughs> You lost me. You lost me right there. You know the cowtail. I do it's know the caramel I'm, with the with the vanilla inside. Yeah, I mean it's it's there's definitely the lineage. If you're gonna draw the family tree, like the pioneers up there, and you're drawing it down, and there's definitely like the sweet tart rope coming off it. Sure. The Twizzler coming, the stuffed Twizzler coming off it. Any any stuff rope is is paying homage Even these cow tails, to man. the cowtail. Yeah, it always goes back to the cowtail. The, your love of the cowtail is like older people and their love of like saying Wilt Chamberlain scored 100. He did. Show me the footage because... Uh, you just got to believe some things, man. You got to believe some things. But one thing that you should believe is to tap 
in with us because our next segment is presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Let's do a status check. You know, throughout the spring practices and the past week, we've talked about players who, you know, jumped on the radar as favorites to make it. But let's do a status check and see where everybody stands. Let's go to the tight ends first. Michael Jacobson and Dallin Holker. Two of our spring favorites have gone quiet yeah. <laughs> in the summer. Yeah. Um, the one thing both of them still have going for them is massive opportunity. Fact. They're still like second and third on the depth chart at tight end. Uh, Dallin Holker's still going to be on my projected 53-man roster. Um, but we keep looking over at the side field. Jawan Johnson working out with the trainers and saying, Looks like he's coming back soon. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, need it. Need it. <laughs> I still like Dallin Holker, but yeah. he's such a limited guy. He's a small, small guy. I Dogs feel like he's more block. of a gadget player. Yeah. Like, like I don't, I don't think he's he's not a full time tight end. Um, he might do some fun things on this offense. They might work him in at fullback. They might work him in, work him in at tight end. But um, like go to guys should be on your fantasy radar. Going to catch five to seven passes a game. I, I I don't I don't see not not the way they're working them through the rotation right now. Yeah, um, I, I like the offense for Jawan. The more we see of it and like these rollouts and stuff like that, and, and Foster's been making a good amount of catches off him. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure Foster will still make some plays there, but like obviously some of those snaps are going to be Jawan plays. And I like him on those plays, the catch and run ability. I feel like he's a top three yak guy on this team potential wise. Um, you know, so I think I think he needs the ball in those situations. Huge thing. Both these guys, yeah. I mean, they really aren't making a lot of plays. Jacobson, I think, had a couple catches recently, but yeah. Hooker got in a fight today. So that was that was cool. something. Cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you. I'm I do like Hooker. I just it might be one of those unfortunately he's you... not the size of an NFL player, and and they don't always creatively work their way out. We've seen that on defense a lot with tweener players. He's kind yeah. of a tweener offensive player. I, I I don't I don't I don't know if I see the full like Xander Hor- Horvath is better at all that stuff yeah. than him, and we're seeing him split out and run yeah. receiver outs now. Yeah. He got open for he had a had a I don't know a sixty yard gain yeah. today. Yeah. Like, Derek Carr was fired up yeah. about yeah. that play. I mean, and, and he's running all those routes. He's way more he's way more versatile. Like mm-hmm. I, I like him. I like I like the potential of him yeah. a lot, a whole lot for sure. Well, he definitely missed. He he missed the last couple of days, but he was definitely missed because when I saw that, you know, the visor. When I saw that visor streaking across, sure. I said, I said, boy, forty up and now. And he Derek Carr loved that, that was a yeah. sweet play. I wish I could have watched it again because yeah. that was another one where I was watching. I was watching Fuaga on that play. Yeah. I was zoned in on Fuaga, and he lost a guy. But Caesar had pulled, and Caesar picked the guy up. Yeah, and Derek Carr just had all the time in the world. Yeah. He threw it, and before he and and then I followed the ball, and I'm like, oh, that's going to forty. And Derek Carr was like. Book it. Like, like he was like, they just knew the play worked beautifully. Yeah. But now I wish I could go back and watch the entire design of the play because it was a great play. No, it was. It was a great play. And I think fullback, like we've talked about, is going to be something that's utilized more this season. But sticking in the backfield, let's go with running back Jordan Mims. I'm up on him. Still hot. He's yeah. still as hot Sky as he hot. was. Maybe higher. Yeah. The only problem is I don't know where he fits. I, I, I think it's going back to Kendra getting called out on the first day of practice. Like, I don't think they're going to have four tail bucks plus Taysom. So does it have to be Mims or Kendra? Does it have to be Mims or Jamal Williams? I don't know. But I don't see how this guy's not making the team with the usage we've seen. Yeah, Where he fits, I think everybody else needs to worry about where yeah, he fits. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, he's, he's, he's in there for me. He's in there for me. Next up, my guy during the spring practice, Millet Bradford, he's been very cold through this period. He, he makes not a couple getting, tackles. Not he makes torched, a couple tackles. but just not. Not yeah. standing out like yeah. he did. Yeah, has, hasn't. He had, he had the little hot streak. Um, he had a really. He, I mean, he, he was on the wrong side of the best special team snap today. Um, but, he was getting double teamed. To be fair, uh, there were two guys there. There was only one touching him. There was only one touching him. Stanley. Off. So receiver Stanley Morgan Jr., who's been hot the last couple of days. I don't know if he's going to get in the receiver mix, uh, but he's been hot because of the other guys. Was was tormented for Miller Bradford today. Mm-hmm. But he's been like, "This is what I do. This is what I do." Mm-hmm. And he was not relenting. Yeah. Like I don't know if Miller Bradford will come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know who? You know who's been playing the role of Miller Bradford though is Roderick Teamer, who he's been the guy getting interceptions and making big plays on the yeah. ball recently. Next up, Equiminius St. Brown. He's on the injury list now, but kind of what was he doing before that? Quiet. Quiet? Yeah, Quiet. I think yeah. so too. Like he, he felt like a guy who was maybe going to push some others out of the way. Mason Tipton's passed him up. Cedric Wilson's slightly ahead of him, I think, mm-hmm. still. Mason Tipton, that's the next one on this list. I mean, 
he had a shot with the first team that they, I, I don't think personally that he fully capitalized like he should have, but he's still up. Rough day for the offense, though. I mean, they had, they had trouble moving the ball. I mean, mm -hmm. he's somebody who get, gets open deep. Like, there wasn't a lot of time to get open deep outside of the Xander Horvath uh, play. Tipton did catch one deep ball at the very, very end of practice. From, from Rattler. But, like, yeah. the, he, he got some first-team reps today. Like, yeah. like, yeah, I agree. You would have loved to see him make a play with Carr. Like, you would have loved to see one just to kind of, like, solidify that a little bit. But it's, right. it's one day. Like, yeah. he, he still made his face. still, still on the radar. Yeah, it's yeah, not a stone tablet. Point. It's just... Abs absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's way... You know, if we're cutting today, he's 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 on. He's, he's, he's easy on. Their usage yeah. backs up what they're saying about him. They're giving him For every. Sure. They're they're taking real looks at him. Mm -hmm. For sure, the name on defense, like Jordan Mims on offense, and that's a lock. This name to me is a lock. Anthony Orgy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's. Yeah. I, if you're keeping, um, I you know he's he's. Shoot, they had three in there today, and he was ahead of the mm -hmm. Hudson, Ford, all them guys. He's mm -hmm. been making plays every single day. Again, yeah, if you're cutting today, he's on. I don't know if it stays that way. Yeah, one of these other guys could make a play. I think it's that tight. But yeah, absolutely, he, he's on the team. He's made the right most now. plays of any backup linebacker. The most often. The only problem is they're all making plays. Like Demarco Jackson had had two really good plays in mm -hmm. the last two days, um, and he's one we hadn't talked about. Kalika Hudson made you know a moment earlier this week. Jalen Ford has had a moment earlier this week. And again, those will probably come down to who's playing the best special teams to get on the roster because that's what matters most because that's where they're going to play. So these guys are like fourth at linebacker, so they have to do it on special teams too. But, man, Orgy's hard to miss. And then, Nick, your guy that you raved about, Will Harris. He's had a good camp. Um, usage was down a little bit the last two days, so I don't know if that's in, indicative of, of, of something trending one way or another, but... It does feel like it worse right now that he's the fourth safety on the on the depth chart, um, and I think he's somebody that has a really good chance of making the team. He does a lot on special teams too. He's, he's on all the special teams mm -hmm. units, like yeah. so. I think he has a really, really, really good chance of making the team no, right now. I, I agree. Uh, like I said, if if I didn't know that Roderick Teamer just didn't play a lot of, he's been around the league for a while and he hasn't gotten to play a lot of defense. Very similar to Stanley Morgan Jr. He's been mostly a special teams guy. The way they're using him on defense, I'd be like, oh, is this a guy? But yeah. I, I, you know, I, I've seen him popping a little more than Harris in the last couple of days. Yeah. Anyway. Any other names? Um, the the defensive tackle Christian uh, Boyd. I keep wanting to say Christian Fulton. Christian Boyd. Um, yeah, he looks. He he gets a lot of valuable snaps. Mm -hmm. He's powerful as hell in those one on ones. Even when he doesn't win, he makes you work. And and just that's another. There's not a lot of depth there. I mean, that 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 old Malcolm Roach shy Tuttle role. I I I think he's maybe got an inside track at it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think he's definitely in there. I like Vickers, too. Like, every yeah. time we do one-on-ones, he, he looks like a handful, too. Boyd looks like more of a handful. Um, I, I kind of like Boyd better than than him, but I think they both are, are kind of in that mix. I like Hergel, the the offensive, yeah. the interior offensive He beat line. out Nuri, Nuri, Nuri no, yeah. already and, and, and in they, the undrafted yeah. rookie Yeah, race. and they like the, 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 I can't say the name, the German guy, the one that got cut. Yeah, you yeah they cut it. him. And they, Her Hergel was always working ahead of him, and, and obviously that's how they felt. And we heard good things about the yeah. guy they let go. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they must have felt good about him. Um, yeah, I think it, I don't think it's really any any other. Um, uh, Rajon uh, oh, yeah. Wright. That's he, a good one. Yeah, Rajon yeah, Wright yeah, Ray is Ray. standing yeah. out yeah. way ahead of all the other corners in his class, so to speak. Yeah. Um, who just had a. Uh, don't have it in front of me. The the guy with the two the, the hyphenated last name. Shamar John Charles. John Charles Shemar, had a really Shemar, rough yeah. day yesterday. Um, Rico Payton, I think, has has more misses than hits or whatever. I think Ray John Wright, out of those, you know, backup corners, is the guy who pops the most often to me. Yeah. Well, let's get into our next segment presented by Hard High Punch Tool of Strawberry Whiskey. Yesterday at the podium, Dennis Allen, he was he was honest when it came to his feelings towards AT Perry. A.T. Perry's gone into year two after some production late last season. Do you think he was a little too hard on him? And where do you see A.T. Perry going in this offense? Well, I, I don't think he's too hard on him. This has been my take since minicamp, that he had a quiet minicamp. He's been having a quiet camp. You aren't seeing a lot of plays. Like, yeah. I, I started to be worried about this back back then, and we've been talking about it since then. I mean, mm -hmm. it's they just aren't, they aren't enough. Like, you want to see him run away with wide receiver three. And I, I, I still think quietly, like, that – group is a major concern yeah. like i think it is a major concern like somebody needs to distinguish themselves in that group he has the talent skills the body type all that stuff it should be him you want it to be him mm -hmm. if he's him it alleviates a lot of problems if it's him it means you hit on a draft pick 
if it's him, it means you don't got to go spend more money next year. If it's him, you don't have a problem this year. But if it's not him, like, I don't love Cedric Wilson in that role. I don't love the next person up behind Cedric in, in that next role. Like, it just kind of falls down. Like, great if it's Mason Tipton, but, like, it's better if it's not. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, and Mason Tipton's not solving the the biggest void for the physical guy. Mason Tipton's in the mold of Alave and Shahid. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, that's in you can win that way. Like, yeah. if those are your top three, great. Like, if it's Cedric Wilson and Tipton's your fourth, you can still win that way, but you're better if it's AT. And, and I just, I really liked his potential last year, too. Yeah. So, like, if it doesn't end up being him, like, it, it's disappointing on multiple levels. But, like, it's been way too quiet. Like, yeah. you know, just you could watch you're, the one-on-one -on -one video and, and just kind of go see for yourself. You're right that you talked about this since like first couple weeks yeah. of OTAs, but his by far his most disappointing day in his Saints career was today because he got called out yesterday, and then we show up there today, and there's no Cedric Wilson, there's no Bub Means, there's no Equinemius St. Brown. So who should step up? And, mm -hmm. and he didn't today, it, it, being challenged and and having you know no other receivers out there in the field this was his day to be like all right i'll show him and and you know he's got five more weeks to do it yeah but, to be yeah, fair to yeah. him there's yeah, plenty yeah, of time yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, all it takes is one light bulb moment like yep. mm -hmm. okay everything this offense clicks boom off i go like yep. i i don't know what the actual issue is like he mentioned it at the podium that like did take him a little bit of time to figure things out he feels like he's starting to figure things out you know i don't think anyone stands up there and says like you know i'm still struggling with 22 percent of the playbook or whatever like if there's anything holding him back like all it takes is a click of yep. moment. There's a day yeah, off yeah. tomorrow. Like maybe the day yeah. off, like he can sit down. Oh shoot, I figured this out, and he comes back and it's different. Right. The young player, all the potential in the world. We aren't drawing conclusions just to this point. Yeah, I mean it's it's not been. We agree, we agree with the assessment for Dennis Allen to get to the like Dennis Allen was hard on Kenry Miller in the first day, but mm -hmm. he was talking about he's got to find a way to stay on the field. With At Perry, he was saying he's he's got a way to he's got to he's got to show us something like yeah. and and that's even. Yeah, it's even colder. He said he's fine, but fine doesn't make the team. Yeah. yeah, it's territory that you don't want to find yourself in. But like you said, there's five more weeks to make this thing happen. Yep. And, and earlier, when you said you've been saying it even in mini camp, I thought I saw a little something in, when they were doing that red zone drill and they were going in the red zone and he caught that pass and he like he's like yeah like I'm 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 him, but I'm not seeing that out there with these pads on the competitiveness that he had at that point and hopefully he can show it going forward yeah definitely yeah now it's time for the martin wine and spirits question of the day martin's is home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon whiskeys and more martin's so much more than just wine today's question comes from i love donuts they ask unless i miss their reporting it seems like Carr is the least likeliest qb to take shots down the field is there anything to this or is it something to be weary of? I don't think there's anything to it. I mean, I, but there, there, there's been there's been shots down the field. There's been big plays. There was uh, one today to Morgan. He, he had a play down the yeah. field. Um, so I don't I, I don't I don't subscribe to that necessarily. I mean, I do think the other guys maybe have had a little bit more volume. I, I think the easy answer to that though is that like <laughs> they're cooking. They've got corners that can get cooked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's there's that. Um, you know, and I I, I just. I think there's just more opportunity sometimes with it. And, you know, I think Rattler's maybe the most likely to take a shot down the field out of all of them. And he, he just has, you know, I think Carr has a really, really good arm, but I think Spencer Rattler has a special arm. And, and you know, it's going to show up a little bit more. And when Mason Tipton, who is a first-team guy, is cooking, you know, lower-tier cornerbacks down the field, that's a very comfortable connection. So I think there's a handful of reasons for it. But no, I mean, I think I think Carr's taken shots down the field. We have the throw charts. I mean, there's been a, a decent amount of 20 plus yard uh, throws. And yeah, I, I just don't I don't necessarily think that it's something that's missing. I actually think they've taken more shots down the field in this camp than they have in, in previous. I can't remember that for sure. Comparing Carr to Carr. Um, obviously, Jameis camps, they took shots. down. The field. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I, I would say it's a fair uh, view to say though that we see a lot of quick short passes in this offense and not a ton of standing back in the pocket wait, waiting to take deep shots but that doesn't mean he can't do it and that doesn't mean that this offense isn't going to produce those opportunities it's not it's not concerning uh, because we're talking a lot about quick passes and check downs and short passes I, I think that will be a feature of this offense not a bug though yeah I mean we do the throw chart every day and day six was the only one that they weren't going 20 plus yeah. I mean so I mean like they they are I mean Today was the first time they got the third down, but like they're calling up play action shots. So I mean, I, I don't yeah. 
I don't know. I, I mean, I think they are. I think they're being aggressive where where they can. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I tell you one thing: those deep shots are like the highlight of camp because we just all track the ball and follow it going. And you know, most of the time it's Tipton or Shahid coming down with the catch. So those are exciting to see. But very interested to see how this goes as camp progresses. That'll do it for this episode of New Orleans Football. We appreciate y'all for stopping in. If you're on the live, stick around for overtime. And if you're not signed up, look, camp is off tomorrow, so you have a chance to get caught up up to this point. Catch you next time.